there and welcome to Budget in Focus, where we'll take a look at the National 2021 Budget. With us today, we have the Honourable Minister of Housing and Water, Colin Kroll. Minister, welcome. Thank you for joining us here today. Good day and thank you for receiving me and thank you for inviting me. Okay, great. So last evening, after about four and a half hours, <laughs> we heard the Minister of Finance announce that uh, the National 2021 budget is $383 billion. Your thoughts, first of all, on that budget? Oh, certainly. Um, and while everyone speaks about the largest budget, but it's important to dissect um, what is in there for everyone. And certainly you can understand that it's a budget for every sector, for every individual, but what is of importance to me is not only about the numbers, but the policy measures that are in there in place to help every level of our society and structure. And so I'm, I'm happy about the, the budget. I mean, it was a marathon, but certainly a lot of um, details, a lot of figures and for everyone. Uh, definitely. Housing. Uh, I think every Guyanese is very, very interested in this sector. We've seen a lot of interest yes. within the six months that government has been in office. Can you tell us what is happening in your sector and what has been the allocation for your sector in the national budget? Oh, sure. Um, so, like in the largest budget, we too have received the largest allocation um, for our ministry. And, but before I answer you, it's, it's important to understand the context of, of where our government placed the Ministry of Housing and Water. Um, all successive PBPC governments have placed housing a uh, top priority for our people and our citizens. And even so, when in the last government, when they, they had it under the a ministry called Communities, immediately our president um, reformed our ministry because we, we as a government, as a policy, see the housing drive, the need to ensure that we provide that opportunity for home ownership. And so our total budget um, allocation for the ministry is about $12.8 billion. And I'm very pleased about that. I'm happy. Um, it signals our commitment um, to keep our manifesto uh, commitment to the people of Guyana. We've committed to our citizens that Notwithstanding that we meet, we met a backlog of 70,000 active applicants waiting in the system, persons who have applied, gone through the process of interview. Um, we've committed that we will allocate over 50,000 in our first term, in our five, first five years. We are on track for that. You will see the provisions that have been made here on the, um, this year are also caters for another allocation for a minimum of 10,000 keeping with our, you know, our yearly allocation on track for 50,000. And so in addition to that, um, you have other aspects or focus of, of our ministry work. And so <clears throat> while allocation is one aspect, we also have um, to a program to ensure consistently that we are able to deliver a number of titles and transports for persons who have completed their transactions. Um, we met, when we met in the system, there were a huge backlog. Um, in fact, last year we had our dream realized um, title distribution exercise. And, and those titles that we distribute, distributed were there, were there sitting at the ministry for one reason or the other. Um, and so this year we've committed, we will process a minimum of 7,000. Um, we are working aggressively um, through the various arms, the legal arm, as well through it, our land registry, um, to have a number of those titles and transports process so that when you've completed the payment on your for your land we want to have you you receive that document signals a complete com, um, ownership of, for your area and your space and so at the same time we are also working on communities we're working on holistic communities and so the provisions and the allocations that you see there is for upgrade on and construction of a number of roads um, network as well as bridges, the water, electricity, amenity, amenities that go with uh, a complete community. So that it is not only about giving you that letter or that document to say you have been allocated um, X lot. It is about us providing the necessary support mechanism to encourage you to move in and immediately to construct your, for your own home um, bill and bill. But outside of that, um, equally important is to encourage persons to construct and provide that mechanism. So you will see some of the policy mechanisms that have been announced. Um, for example, 
the raising of the new building society ceiling from 12 to 15 uh, million dollars immediately um, that will help all because new, new building society you know uh, they cater mainly for the low income um, yes. bracket yes. and so that provides an opportunity for you now it raises the ceiling it provides at the low interest rate so one we're happy about that because it's something we've advocated for we've met the banking association all the bank the entire banking network we've met them as a team we've met them individually we met new building society and this is something they have asked for and um, you see it in the budget now and so it certainly will provide more relief for persons who are applying for loans so they have much more disposable um, resources that they can spend and in addition to that they have the opportunity of looking at other aspects for their home construction so they can widen that network not just about thinking about putting up a structure but you can do other things with it then we also have um, the raising of the ceiling of the low interest relief that too will um, make more resources available for the, the borrower so the policy measures that are there is is to encourage persons to construct to build and then you also have the announcement of the zero rated for, um, for a number of items for the construction sector whether you're speaking about the stone you're speaking about sand um, for the and then to encourage the local industries too so a lot of it about the PVC ceilings, um, the, those um, materials that you utilize for your construction of your home. So it's encouraging the local sector um, to participate. And so I'm extremely happy when I see the policy measures that have been announced um, for our se construction sector, for our home ownership um, and our networking. Um, we also have um, zero rating for, um, of course, your roofing and so you have a number of companies here who are uh, over embarked on you know on pvc ceiling roofing um so it's uh, encouraged that in industry and certainly i'm happy about that um, in addition to that um our program also entails we we have another aspect of where chp has responsibility for approvals and so you will see this year us um, implementing the single window processing unit um, for the construction. Um, this um, is a frustr many of the, the business community, they'll tell you it's a frustrating process for them. Um, they apply, sometimes they are waiting for a while, sometimes they don't know what is the status, um, different reasons. For us, we have to send it off to, for example, the local authorities for the opinion, the A Environmental Protection Agency, Guyana Fire Service. So there are external agencies that are involved because for us to give that permit uh, for construction, uh, we need to have the no objection from other players, depending on the type of um, construction that you will be involved right, in, right. the industry itself. Yes. And so zoning for us is equally important. Um, so in our planning unit, when you're applying even for commercial land, we have um, that policy of identifying locations that are suitable for the type of industry or commercial in the, um, business that you want to embark on. So the single window um, unit is, is going to aid um, this sector. Um, we certainly can, will reduce the bureaucracy. Um, we'll have a shorter turnaround period. And then, of course, you can go online and we'll be able, we'll be able to um, have an update as to where your application is. Because what we are looking at is that you have that portal. So if it's at a different agency, well, then you will know where, you know, the bugbear is. And we will put some timeline and so forth um, for, for a response. And so this is very important for the work we do because as a government, we are a facilitator and we want to make our citizens, um, the business, when they conduct business, that the ease of doing that business, it must be able to help them. Um, because, uh, you know, they have a, a saying that says um, time is of, of, okay, of so. essence and value, money. And so we, we want to encourage investors. And if we're going to encourage investors, then we also need to um, create that environment. So resources have been made available for that for the introduction of a single window system. Um, in addition to that, in, in, we also have um, an IDB funded project. And so we have expanded the boundary. Um, it goes all the way to on the East Coast to Victoria. 
um, up to Grove, Grove Diamond on the East Bank and on the West Coast, um, Parfait Harmony. And so you will see the construction of a number of core houses um, and you will also have the subsidy program. Um, so we're happy about that. We have $1.5 billion have been made available um, for this year um, for the, uh, that project. The, and in addition to that, you will see, for example, in Parfait Harmony, we will be um, constructing and rehabilitating all, all the streets in the area. So you will have an expansive program. I know time doesn't permit us to go to exact yeah, detail. Yeah, so we can't go this. in detail. Yeah, so, <laughs> but these are some of our plans. And so I'm very happy for that. Um, of our, we eight about uh, close to $9 billion that have been allocated on the um, Ministry of Housing aspect. And of that, um, $1 billion have been made available for the much talked about um, access road, um, continuation of the access road for to facilitate um, from Great Diamond all the way to Mandela Avenue. Um, so we have one billion dollars to be made available for the portion between um, Mandela Avenue and Eccles. Um, of course, that will be a four-lane um, way, um, both ways, um, and of heavy duty. So because that corridor um, has commercial um, interests along that way, and then it will connect, connect. You can be connected from Eccles, and then you go all the way coming out at Six and Seventh Street, Diamond. So that alone will ease the, the bottleneck and the congestion for, well, I know the East persons on the East, East Bank, Bank, persons yes. on the West Coast, West Bank, they will be happy to hear that. And so if you're coming out from the East Bank or you're coming from Diamond, then you don't need to go on to the main East Bank corridor. Right. Um, you just come all the way down. And so by the end of this year, certainly, and even before, but I'll just use the outside time <laughs> period, everyone um, can traverse that corridor. While at the same time, you've seen the announcement of the highway from Ogle, the first phase um, announcement. So while that is coming on stream, our, um, our road, internal road will be done. And so for homeowners too, because you know we have allocated and these bank um, a number of allocations there. So for those homeowners, uh, they were concerned about the congestion. Um, they, 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 their worries, they, they are now eased. You've also seen at other sectors, we have the announcement in terms of construction of school on that East Bank corridor. So it, it, it's making facilities available for where you reside. It seems, it seems to be a comprehensive list of things happening. So it's not just everything happening in a silo, but really everything coming together to make um, you know life easier for every Guyanese, really. Um, on that note, uh, there has been a 5% reduction in the tariff for water. Can you tell us what that means for ordinary Guyanese? Oh, certainly. And, and that is a continuation from last year. Last year, you would have seen the announcement, first of all, the removal of VAT on the for water utility, and then for our pensioners, um, the subsidy. So for the first 10 cubic meters for our pensioners, uh, a full subsidy um, for all of those parts. Of course, the meters have to be in their, uh, yes. their names. <laughs> so this year, you see a 5% across the board um, for persons on the, for who pay water utility. That means a lot. We're talking about 174,000 um, customers who will benefit from that. We're speaking about $325 million into the pockets of the citizens. And that is what it, the value, um, the current value of that 5% um, reduction in water. And it means a lot. I mean, I, for GWI, yes, we're looking to <laughs> increase our inflow um, so that we can do much more. But at the same time, we want to bring relief to our citizens. Um, and so I'm happy about that too. And so it signals, it signals our government intention that we want to bring relief to the citizens. And that is how we, we implement policies. Um, when we implement policies, it's across the board. And so everyone benefits. At the same time though, I must say that GDBI, um, we're working with uh, the strategic plan. We have a strategic plan in place. Um, on the short term, a first five year strategic plan. And so that on, on this year budget, the resource, some of the resources that we made available is to commence the, uh, the implementation of that plan. For example, um, to one, reduce um, non-revenue water. Um, it's important because, you know, you, sometimes you have wastage in the system and you also want to measure the consumption. And so a number of um, meters have been um, programmed for purchase this year. 
and that is to continue our implement implementation of meters across the board and so that we can target reduction on our non-revenue water. And that is very important because that is one area that we, we very much can improve on at, at GWI. In addition to that is our program um, to increase our reach for um, treatment, uh, treated water across the coastline. Um, we are about 53% coverage of treated water on the coastline. And so we have a commitment in our strategic plan within this, uh, this five years to take it to a level of about 90 percent coverage of treated water. And that is very important. I know a person that is one of the issues. A lot of people complain of really um, yes. the quality of the water. Certainly. And the color, the and the other aspects. So, yes, we, we're cognizant of that. And it's an expensive venture. Um, in, in fact, um, across the board, it will cost about 99 million US dollars um, to have a complete coverage. But we've st we, on this year program, um, we will start um, and to expand and to further put in treatment plans for a number of communities. At the same time, with our schemes, we also, because in our budget um, through CHP, we also cater for the water network for the new the new communities, the new villages for which we have housing schemes. And so we, the importance is just to put down wells for those areas to service them. So that is the advantage with the ministry, um, both housing and water being on the same, under the same ministry because you can have um, that networking, you can have cohesion and you can have planning um, and so that you can have at the same time everything is completed. Right. So the so GWI's program is also in sync with what we're doing at housing. And also as part of GWI's program, um, you know, the hinterland, delivery of hinterland water expanded across the hinterland communities. It's equally important uh, for all our citizens, no matter where you reside, no matter where you live. And so <clears throat> we also have, or you will see a number of the hinterland villages for putting down of a number of wells in this year budget. Um, and in addition to that, we're procuring another rig. And so with that, GWI can save a lot of resources because those rigs can go to the communities do and, and put, do the drilling. And we also, we then buy the pipes to connect. And so hinterland communities too can see expanded service, um, delivery of safe water for them. I know for many of them, they, also, they depend on the, the riverine or wherever they, the water flow that for the community. And sometimes that's a challenge because, um, especially where those are the boats that traverse, you know, the water becomes, uh, or where mining is concerned, uh, we're cognizant of that. And so we're working with a plan to ensure that we put more wells in the hinterland. A lot of work has started in nine. Um, this year we'll move on to region one and then, of course, some in region seven and eight. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter if you're in a mountain. You are equally important. You are a citizen and you're entitled to receive that benefit and the services like every citizen in our country. You do seem to have a lot happening into your ministry there. Um, it's a busy ministry. I, I mean, can tell. Have to pass there on the weekday. <laughs> uh, so coming back to housing, though, um, I know we talk about the measures for the ordinary citizens, but one of the measures that were announced yesterday um, by the finance minister is the establishment of two new industrial um, areas. Can you go a little in depth about that for persons in the business sector? Oh, sure. Um, and I spoke about zoning, yes. and, and, and that is why I said it's important, because um, even now, with the advent of the oil and gas sector, um, you, have, you have persons for their own commercial purpose, um, want to do certain businesses, um, and you also have for the oil and gas sector. So it's equally important because we, ought, we have to have that blend. While we're focusing on housing, we also have to have that zoning for industrial purpose. And, and so we... Um, what we do, the, you have to submit your plan to us um, on your request. And uh, when it comes to us, we, you know, of course, we review, we evaluate, we do the necessary background check with the, our interagency. And so once it's viable, then we proceed to make that allocation, that whether it's how many acres, depending on your request. And so uh, the point I want to make here is that persons in the commercial industrial sector um, you two are equally important and so that this is what we do we have to we have to 
strike that balance. Yes, there is a huge demand for housing. Yes, and there is a huge backlog. But of course, we also have a commercial aspect for our operations at the ministry. Great, great. Uh, so tell us a little about, uh, I know the minister mentioned 10,000 house lots, and you have been talking about that as well. Tell us about some of the work that will be done or some of the areas that are being considered to see this becoming a reality. Oh, sure. Um, so for, for, and for this or first target, we had a number of allocations that commenced in December um, last year, or Dream realized um, um, land allocation exercise. So you have along the East Coast, um, East Coast Corridor, and then you'll have along the East Bank Corridor for Region 4. Then you have an, a, a few communities on the West Coast, um, and we also made some allocations for Region 6. But in this year's budget, in addition for those housing years, and wor what the work entails, uh, we started the access roads for all those communities on the emergency budget that we had last year. So the resources that we made available is to continue our program um, inwards, and that is for the road network and the infrastructure upgrade, whether it's drains, and as I said earlier, for water, because we have to put that in at the same time. You know, we need to move away from doing things after, so you have to have that vision and that planning. So we're putting in the pipe network on two on for the community, and so for all of those areas, um, <coughs> whether you're talking on the east coast, for example, um, vigilance, um, Strathfay, Annadale. LBI, and those are some of the communities on the East Coast. And the East Bank, you have Great Diamond, Little Diamond, Horse Telling, um, Prospect, and so forth on the East Bank. Um, for West Coast, for example, we have um, Zealot, uh, Virgin New um, um, uh, There are about two, two other communities on the West Coast. Um, on Region 6, we have in Ordinance Fortlands, number 75, number 79, um, Kilcoy, um, Chesney, and those are the communities on, on Region 6. So we have a number of communities for which we are working in now um, for development of those housing years. So for those persons who have received their allocation, I know they will be pleased for me to announce that you can be assured, get, please start your saving your money to, uh, for immediate construction because we are working steadfastly to put the infrastructure in place for you to move in and start um, your, um, your own construction. And at the same time, we're working with the banking sector so, um, to make you more much more eligible for you to acquire a loan. But I also want to speak a little on the housing because while we spoke about allocation, we also have a housing program and that is for the construction of a number of houses. And that, um, those for those, we are catering for the, you have the, some, the young professionals, especially in the, some other different aspects from, for example, His Excellency on Saturday would have committed to um, our men from the army, men and women from the army, allocation for a number of houses that will make them eligible. Of course, the system that we have is public-private partnership. So for those houses that will be constructed, um, we, we will do the pre-qualification so we'll take have your information put you through that process to ensure that you can pre-qualify to make you eligible uh, so that you don't have confusion I, I, in the last regime um, for many persons received their letters and then by the time they got a response back from the bank somebody has gone with their, their house and so we won't want that confusion so we have a number of houses that we constructed um, at least a thousand on this year and that's that's more along the here in the coastland then we're not region 10 um, region 10 we've also committed that we will construct a thousand houses there um, in the amelia ward community in fact this year we've start place some resources to start land preparation work including um region t um, nine now for let them we have already still placed some resources there for land preparation work for further allocation um, in March, Region 2 will be in Region 2 um, in Esequibo. Um, we are identifying um, charity and on the naming in our first phase. So there's a comprehensive plan for all the regions across our country because our housing program is not only on the coastland. We also have hinterland. Um, on the hinterland this year, we are expecting to commence the construction of a, a number of homes in the hinterland too. Um, that you'll hear much more on in our budget speech but um we are going to commence the hinterland aspect and so 
every citizen, doesn't matter where you are, just the coastland, the housing program is much more different and from the hinterland and how they do it. Um, so we, we have received funding. We are also working with the IDB in terms of the hinterland program. There was a program before for a hinterland but funded by the Inter-American Development Bank. Um, that un unfortunately, there was no um, continuation plan. And so we're currently discussing with them uh, but we will move ahead and start the construction of those houses too. So it's a lot going on at our ministry. Yes, definitely. And I'm happy that you mentioned the hinterland program because, you know, a lot of times we just hear about the cause, the cause, the cause, and persons in the hinterland feel like, oh, I'm left out. Development is not coming here. So I'm happy to, to hear that the ministry is really working to ensure that persons in the hinterland also access services that is being offered by the Ministry of Housing yes, sure. and Water. Um, Minister, unfortunately, we're running out of time, but okay. before we leave, um, is there anything else you want to see on the budget particularly since you know there are other measures aside from housing uh, like education we've seen um, an increase in old age pension we've seen an increase in the public assistance um, for single parents and other persons it's it's so comprehensive because it really targets every citizen at every level so is there anything else you want to see as we wrap up sure well, I'm pleased about the allocation for the Ministry of Education. And, and you know, education is very important, and that's the foundation for all of us. Um, they say if you want a wealthy nation, then you have to have an educated nation. And so you'll see the resources that you see there, I certainly, and I'm pleased about the aggressive program that the Ministry of Education has. And you're talking about hinterland too, so to bridge the divide, um, to make that opportunity, to, it doesn't matter where you live, but to make that opportunity for our children all across, whether it's Riverin, whether it's on, you're in the hill, whether it's you're in the mainstream for connectivity. So what, I, what is important for me too, in addition to that, is our aggressive program for connectivity to communities. And that is very important to bridge the gap, um, to keep the communication network, um, you know, much more with the online programs and, and our opportunities now for scholarship, more scholarship program being made available. So our children will not be a disadvantage for, especially our young people who are coming out of the school system. They won't be at a disadvantage when, when you have all of those connectivities for the, for the villages. And so that for me, it's pleasing. Um, so I'm happy because I'm very concerned for young people, especially, uh, you know, I have an affection for the hinterland. And so for those young people that come out of the school system is for to encourage them to continue, not just go on into the backlands and work and, you know, and um, do ad hoc jobs, but, but to have them on mainstream to further their studies. So w we will provide that opportunity. So that, that I'm very pleased about. And then, of course, the smart classes. So you have the programs that are moving to the secondary schools and at the same time of our, the health of our nation. And so um, that is very um, important and must have a healthy nation. So you have resources that are made available for to ensure that we don't have aspects and that talk about shortage of drugs, but also to develop the regional hospitals and so to, to reduce that dependency on Georgetown. So as I said, it's there for everyone and of course half an hour is not enough for us to talk on it. So once again, I'm happy um, that you invited me. Uh, we'll have other opportunities to go much more in depth of some of the programs that we have planned, um, but certainly for the Ministry of Housing and Water, all our citizens can look forward to your government working diligently, working every day to uh, reduce our backlog and to provide that opportunity for your own home or ownership and to feel that you are part of the circle of, of this life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Minister. That's all the time we have, unfortunately, but we hope to have you back sometime soon so that we can delve further into the ministry's uh, work plan work plan and program. Uh, thank okay. you. For, thank you, viewers, for joining us. It has been a pleasure. Do take care and have a blessed rest of the day. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.